This sphere is moving between electrodes having a potential difference of about 25 kilovolts. It is immersed in a slightly conducting oil. The mechanism responsible for the bouncing motion is basic to the interaction of electric fields and moving media. The applied voltage induces charges on the electrodes and the contacting metallic sphere. By virtue of the charges on its surface, the sphere is attracted toward the upper plate. But as the sphere rises, the charge induced on its surface leaks off through the liquid, and eventually gravity returns the sphere to the plate to renew the process. Here we use corn oil with a relaxation time of about one second. Now we have transformer oil with a relaxation time of over 10 seconds. The sphere reaches the upper electrode long before the charges leak off. Upon contact, it acquires charges of the opposite polarity and is pulled downward by the electric field and gravity. The sidewise motion shows that now even charges on the wall are important. The oscillations of the spheres provide an explanation of what we see if metal filings are placed between the electrodes. In corn oil, most of them lose their charge and fall back before reaching the top electrode. But in transformer oil, they stream between electrodes. Now, if we increase the voltage, the streaming particles cause electrical breakdown. Small particles in oil-insulated high-voltage equipment can similarly lead to disaster. three streams, three trash barrels, and three electrodes, each connected to the adjacent barrel. The drop deflections indicate that a large alternating voltage is building up spontaneously. We have an unusual form of a three-phase high-voltage generator. This explanation may occur to you with a little thought as we study now the interactions of electric fields and moving media. Moving medium is ordinary water. We'll place the ring at one kilovolt in potential. At a short distance from the nozzle, the jets break into drops, which we see here in slow motion. The water jets are grounded. And so charges on the ring induce image charges on the jets. As the drops pull away from the stream, they do so with a net charge. This charge is then transported to the pail, where it adds to the charge from the preceding drops. 
This sphere attached to a conductor can give an idea of the electric field intensity. About 30 kilovolts per centimeter is required to produce breakdown in air. So we generate about 10 kilovolts, beginning with charges induced by two 510 volt batteries. We have a voltage generator. The relaxation time in tap water is far less than a microsecond. This gives plenty of time for charge to accumulate on the drop as it forms. For the free drop, the relaxation time of the air is much greater than a second. Enough time for the drop to reach the pail with its charge. The electric Reynolds number based on the properties of the air, the distance of travel, and the drop velocity is large. In a high voltage Van de Graaff generator, the falling drops are replaced by a moving insulating belt. Charges are placed on the belt by a corona source at the bottom. They are removed at the top, where they accumulate on the dome. This small Van de Graaff generator can make 500,000 volts. Large modern electrostatic machines produce as high as 10 million volts. So far, we've considered the effects of material motion on the electric field. This experiment emphasizes what we've learned. You'll want to explain it yourself. We placed a second stream of drops next to the one we were using a moment ago. This stream also has its inducer electrode and a pail for catching the drops. Now, however, there is no external source of voltage on either inducer ring. Rather, the rings are connected to the pails of the opposite streams, which causes them to charge spontaneously. The electrical breakdown makes it clear that with no excitation, this system generates about 20 kilovolts. Kelvin's water drop experiment demonstrates for us that not only does the motion generate the electric field, but that the field also has a strong influence on the motions. If we bear in mind that the major constituents of this experiment, air, water drops, and electric charges, are also in the atmosphere, it is not difficult to imagine that the drop dynamics have a lot to do with lightning. Like our experiment, thunderstorms are an electrohydrodynamic dynamo. Of course, a much more complicated one than we have here. Lord Kelvin's dynamo took yet another form in our introduction. Three streams, with each inducer electrode attached to the barrel of a neighbor. The alternating streams show that the fields are spontaneously building up. This time, the voltage of each pail increases in an oscillatory fashion. The arrangement of electrodes, water, and air is a three-phase AC dynamo.